My name is Kat Albrecht. I'm with Missing Pet Partnership and I'm here uh, to demonstrate the use of Hexagon. Um, Hexagon is used to confirm whether or not a blood stain is human or animal blood. Um, Hexagon kit is sold, uh, includes an OBTI reagent bottle and the test cassette tray, which is this here, which I'll show you in just a moment. Um, you'll also need to purchase sterile swab sticks separately or use ones that are provided in the DNA test uh, collection kit. Always wear gloves when performing this test. I'll bring one of the swabs over here. Um, the reason that we want uh, to talk about the utilization of Hexagon is that this is a, a tool that can be used that if you find a blood stain, you uh, can determine whether or not it's human blood or animal blood. Um, we actually have used this particular test um, not very often. Um, usually if we end up finding blood and we find animal fur, it's a pretty uh, good indication that the animal has been killed by a predator. Um, but there may be occasions where you would want to use this and I'm going to demonstrate it and just show it so you know that this is available to you if you decide to purchase it. If you're already taking our pet detective training course, the, the MAR Missing Animal Response course, um, then you understand and know that um, when you're working a lost pet investigation, many times you're finding physical evidence or your search dog is, is locating uh, suspicious stains or tufts of fur or bones or other evidence and that DNA testing or further uh, testing is um, something that you may be able to do to bring closure to the owner that's lost their pet. Um, and again, we're here uh, earlier on one of the earlier videos we discovered as we were in here filming uh, and uh, talking about DNA testing and the use of luminol, I discovered that there are some blood spattered on this door. So it just so happens that we set up to film here. I looked over, saw blood stains. And the previous video, I tested one of these, or two of these blood stains, and it tested positive for blood. That was utilizing the test kit of Hemadent, which uh, is, which you have to watch that video to see that, but that, this test here, can, because of the green color that came up, that indicates that these stains are blood. Now, we get to find out if it's human blood or animal blood. And the reason that would be important to you on a case would be um, if you find a stain you want to make sure it's animal blood since you're looking for a missing animal. So the instructions on, uh, on to use Hexagon are the first step is you unscrew the red cap from the OBTI reagent bottle which has the collection stick attached. Okay, so basically it comes with this intact bottle and you open it up by unscrewing it and it has liquid in the bottom and it has a stick here. The next step is that you use the collection stick, which is this, to collect the sample of the stain by running the stick across the stain. Since the collection stick is already damp, dry blood will adhere to the stick, thus distilled water is not needed. All right, so I'm basically, I'm, I'm just kind of re-wetting this stick. And then now I'm gonna take one of these stains and run Maybe I'll take two of the stains. I'll take one of the bigger stains up here. I'm going to run this stick. Doesn't take a whole lot of it, but I'm basically scraping blood because we've tested it with the other test and determined it is blood. Okay, and that's got the blood on the end of it. So use the collection stick to collect the sample stain by running the stick across it. Uh, I already read that. That sounds familiar. Hmm. Number three, replace the bottle cap on the bottle like this. Tighten down to prevent leakage and shake for five seconds. Snap off the tip of the red cap. It has a tip here. So that comes off and now it leaves a hole there. All right, now you're going to place the Hexagon OBTI test cassette on a level surface. So let me first open that up. So here's the hexagon test kit. 
Some students have told me I wouldn't say it looks like a um, pregnancy test. All right, so you take the test, put it on a flat surface, maybe not one that's slanted on the edge of your evidence kit. Gently squeeze two drops of the, the re reagent containing the suspected blood sample that's in this onto the cassette test, onto the test cassette sample tray in the oval shaped section mark S which is right down this end here. So I'm going to put two drops here. One, two. All right, so that begins to soak in that area there. After two to three minutes, one or two blue bars will appear in the test window. In most cases, the results will appear in three minutes, but allow 10 minutes before you consider the test completes. To interpret, if only one bar, if only one blue control bar appears, then you know the test strip are both functioning. If only one blue bar appears, it's non-human blood. If two blue bars appear, it's human blood. So we'll have to watch for a few uh, moments. Um, so ultimately in here, as this is soaking in there, there should be, if this is human blood, two bars will appear. If it's animal blood, only one bar will appear. Um, I had thought that we could potentially demonstrate some animal blood here, but I think we'll just go ahead and watch this bar here. Now, the test itself, like I said, uh, will take, it says again to interpret one blue bar uh, indicates that the test strip is functioning. And so we will, which right now we see one bar that's already appearing. I don't want to tip it because it still has, it's still uh, in the process of being processed. So instead of making this a 10-minute uh, video, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about, and, and I'm actually seeing that there is a second bar that's appearing, but I want to wait. Um, I'll talk a little bit more um, about our investigations so that this is just not dead air time of me talking. Um, Things that you need to keep in mind when you're out working a case are you never know what you're going to find, um, especially when you're, you're going yard to yard and you're looking for a missing cat and you come across tufts of fur. Um, as we have talked about in the class, tufts of fur are, can be an indication that it's, uh, a predator is involved. We've had cases before where we found tufts of fur and it turns out that somebody had just brushed their dog. Um, so you need, to, there's a difference between tufts of fur and clumps of fur. When a coyote um, or any type of a predator takes a cat, they're often, uh, after they kill it, they're taking mouthfuls of fur that they're pulling out and removing from the, uh, from the victim or the animal, and, and they're spitting that on the ground. And that is the result of why you find tufts of fur on the ground. Tufts of fur... Um, usually are, uh, especially if there's several of them, are an indication that a predator has taken the animal. What you don't often know is, is it the missing pet that you're looking for? Um, it's very difficult, and especially when you have the pet owner with you, um, you need to um, be sensitive to the fact that this is probably an animal that they love. You need to be sensitive in, um, in, in describing to them their options of what they can do. Um, if the tufts of fur match the missing cat that you're looking for, you can explain to them this may or may not be your cat, um, but we can do further testing. There's a forensic fur examination that could be done, uh, relatively inexpensive. I believe the test is under $100. That information, again, has, uh, is being provided to you in your training manual in our missing animal response course. Um, DNA testing could be performed, but again, with DNA testing, you need to have a control sample of the missing pet's DNA. So either, you know, a, a whisker, a fur from the missing cat at home, 
um, and then you would compare that with the fur, tufts of fur that you found out, uh, you know, wherever you find those tufts of fur, and you can send those off to a genetics lab. They can do a DNA test and then confirm that it was from the missing cat. Um, with most cases, though, DNA testing is going to be several hundred dollars, so few pet owners are going to be able to afford that, but there are people that will want that closure and will pay that in order to have that testing done. We don't do that type of testing at Missing Pet Partnership, but that is, uh, that is available. Um, we're just here showing you the different options of different testing that normally or initially was designed for use in law enforcement for homicide investigations we just use it here for lost pet cases to bring closure and answers to people so if you are able to get um, in here closer you can see that the testing here shows the one blue uh, line and the second blue line that is forming at the edge there. So it is an indication with the two bars that it is human blood. So somebody got injured, happened to spatter their blood right where we happened to set up the camera so I could show this, the actual testing of this. Um, means I don't have to go outside in the cold, rainy weather here in Seattle uh, in order to do the, the filming we were gonna do with some blood outside. Um, so just know that these are available for you. Uh, how to order these products is in your training information. If you haven't taken our Missing Animal Response course, uh, you can get more information on being trained to be a pet detective at missingpetpartnership.org. Uh, click on Find a Pet Detective and under Training, and you'll get the information on taking our webinar training course. Thank you.